Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a review for the online quiz of Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development at Utah Valley University. In this, we're looking at the first quiz for Chapter 8, which is on Middle Adulthood. First question is, what are the two top leading causes of death in middle adulthood? Well, um, the choices are diabetes and accidents, or diabetes and heart disease, or cancer and accidents, or cancer and heart disease. It's a mix and match. Well, it varies according to what age group you're talking about. Um, for younger people, it's one set. For older people, it's another set. But for middle adulthood, most of the statistics support answer D is cancer and heart disease. Um, now, what's interesting is that when we look at a lot of these uh, top killers, a lot of them are preventable. And many forms of cancer and most forms of heart disease are preventable. Um, and so it gets, if we had... Well, basically, they may not always be at the top of the list. All right, question number two. The development of malignant or cancerous cells in parts of the body other than where they originated from is referred to as A, migration, B, mutation, C, proliferation, or D, metastasis. Well, that one's a hard one to pronounce, and it happens to be the correct answer. Um, so the cancer cells basically have spread. They've metastasized. Um, Question number three, what may help middle adult and older men ward off erectile dysfunction? Well, the ch eliminating red meat, regular exercise, taking herbal supplements, and avoiding caffeine. And despite what the herbal supplement people would like you to think that everything they make works perfectly all the time with no side effects, the correct answer to this one is actually regular exercise. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple thing. Um, okay. Number four. Why is it believed that IQ scores in the United States have risen over the past couple of generations? I wish to say, why is it believed by people who actually do research? Uh, the choices are better health care, less to worry about, better education, or small genetic changes. Well, of these four choices, the one that's going to get you credit is C, better education. There's been a huge number of changes. Um, a lot more people going to school, a lot more finishing high school, a lot more going to college. There's, there's a lot going on in education. Now, there's also something called the Flynn effect, which actually talks about the, the rise in IQ scores as being something of a statistical artifact. But um, that's not what we're talking about right here. These are the choices, and so it's going to be better education. Number five, a cluster of knowledge and skills that depends on accumulated information and experience, so awareness of social conventions and good judgment, is referred to as blank. A, crystallized intelligence, B, emergent intelligence, C, fluid intelligence, or D, assurgent intelligence. The answer here is the accumulated information over time. If I can get this to go to the next one, it's crystallized intelligence. That's the collection of information you have. I think of a crystallized in terms of it's forming and it's building up over time. Question number six. Aspects of creativity are more likely to be found among young people in which field? Now, please note, this is the chapter on middle adulthood, but we're asking about young adults. Um, this information is from chapter eight. So anyhow, here's the choices. Uh, art, writing, biology, and physics. So again, the question is, aspects of creativity are more likely to be found among young adults in which field? Um, curiously, the answer to this question is D, physics. Um, now, obviously, when we think of creativity, we think of things like art and writing. And our book specifically talks about um, people in visual art, literature, and engineering or inventing who, who really peaked in middle adulthood. So it says Pablo Picasso painted Guernica at 56. Toni Morrison uh, wrote Beloved at 56. Uh, Thomas Edison invented the kinetoscope at 44. Okay, fair enough. Um, on the other hand, the book does qualify this by saying sometimes it's different in music, mathematics, and physics. And that's why physics is the answer here, where uh, a lot of people seem to peak at earlier ages. Um, I should also mention that it, uh, as far as literature goes, poets also uh, peak earlier than novelists do, but that's not mentioned in the book. That's, I got that from somewhere else. Anyhow, that's that one. Number seven is according to Erickson, that's Eric Erickson, Mr. Uh, psychosocial development, what is meant by the term generativity? Well, uh, 
For him, it could mean attaining financial success, bearing and rearing children, reaching a state of self-actualization, or coming to terms with one's mortality. While generativity in the Ericksonian psychosocial developmental scheme refers specifically to children, now, that's sort of what he had in mind. A lot of people would like to have that be a broader definition, but this is the prototypical definition from Erickson's own research that um, you are generating if you are having kids. Um, now, as one who's had to adopt children, I kind of take exception to that one, but um, that's another issue. Question number eight. According to researchers studying the big five personality traits, personalities what are largely shaped by environmental factors as we age, B, tend to mature rather than be shaped by environmental conditions, C, lose negative attributes as, pers as a person reaches self-actualization, or D, reach a threshold state and are cemented during middle childhood. Okay, the one that our book is going to give you credit for, now remember the big five, that is openness to experience, conscientiousness, uh, extroversion, uh, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Uh, the one that the book talks about is B, that they tend to mature, uh, which means you tend to become uh, less neurotic and a little more agreeable um, rather than shaped by environmental conditions. Although I have to say, as a social psychologist, that's me, who studies the effect of environments on behavior, I, I really do have to take exception with this. And I, and I feel that there's so much range within a person's own behavioral repertoire you can get a lot of variation depending on environmental conditions. So I'm not happy about this one, but B is what is getting credit. Okay, number nine. Which person demonstrates typical workforce expectations during middle adulthood? A, Danica dreams that she will continue to climb the corporate ladder all the way to the rank of CEO. B, Mark is happy with his position as middle manager, although he once dreamed of being CEO. C, um... Steph can finally concentrate on her job as CEO with little outside demands from her family. Or D, Jose is happy to show the ropes to the company's new CEO, who is 20 years his junior. Well, um, in terms of what often happens to expectations during middle adulthood, the best example of this one is going to be B. A person who became a middle manager, uh, wanted to be CEO, uh, is, is middle manager, and kind of that's where they're going to be, but has come to uh, terms with it and is happy with it. Um, there's a fair amount of reality checking uh, during middle adulthood. Okay, the final question in the first quiz is this. 45-year-old Dawn meets her mother, 72-year-old Dolores, for lunch every Monday and Thursday. Ten years ago, Dawn would only see her mother a few times a year, despite the fact that the two women live close by. What's the most likely contributing factor to the close relationship that forms between middle-aged adults and their parents? Well... A, guilt over past disputes. B, fear of losing an elderly parent. C, letting go of past tensions and expectations. Or D, shared experiences and the process of aging. Well, um, there's a lot of things that can affect it. Um, but one that shows up a little more often than others is C, letting go of past tensions and expectations. And again, uh, we talked about the reality checks of middle adulthood and seeing that the relationship sort of is what it is and no longer trying to necessarily change it or manipulate it or wish it were different can contribute to this uh, kind of relationship. Anyhow, that is the end of the first quiz for Chapter 8 on Middle Adulthood for Lifespan Development. Thanks.